Hello everyone, Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. What? It is a Thursday. It is 3 p.m. Central Time. That's not normally when I go live. What's happening? Um, so welcome to a new event that I am doing. Um, let's say happy crafternoon. <laughs> this event will take place uh, in the afternoon because hence the name, Crafternoon, and it's a Crafternoon Creative Escape. This is going to be a monthly event that I will be having every month. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And uh, normally this will be a unlisted private video. Um, however, because this is a new event, I decided to go live to everybody. So, um, just so that I could share it. I'm so excited about this, uh, a new idea. And um, and then you can know what it's all about and whether you can um, want to join me in the future. And I'll tell you how that will work and all the details. Hey, Mary, uh, cold and icy in Colorado. Yeah, it is it is not nice here in Minnesota, <laughs> weather-wise at all. It's very, very cold. Hey, Kathy. And uh, it's a good day to afternoon, right? Because, uh, yeah, it's not not fun to be outside right now. So I think it's warmed up to three degrees here in Minnesota. It was minus 18 this morning. It is quite windy, though. So I'm sure the feels like is not happy. So welcome to the uh, Sue Stamfield Crafternoon Creative Escape. I, I personally believe that self-care is so important. In fact, I was listening to a program, I think it was on NPR this past weekend, and uh, there was a quote, um, self-care is not self-indulgence, it's self-preservation. And that really spoke to me. Um, one of the things that I love about crafting is that it's twofold. It, um, it relaxes and de-stresses me and brings me to my happy place, which is important. And then the things I create, I can send to others and make them happy. So it's a win-win in my book. And many of you have still told me that you feel the same. So hello, Beckenridge, Michigan. Excellent. And Norma's here from Canada. Thanks for being here. So let me explain a little bit about the Crafternoon. As I said, in the future, this will be a private uh, video. Um, but this first one, it's going public so everybody can partake. Um, so I have a number of people that actually earned this event last month by placing a qualifying order of $50 before tax and shipping US. And, um, and this is uh, only for US, although I will have a tutorial purchase that you can do from anywhere. So um, those that spent $50 last month qualified and they got a packet in the mail or it's on its way um, with the, the card materials. Um, in the future, I'm I'm touching base with all of them. I'd like to know when their packets arrive because I clearly am going to need to send them earlier. I kind of forgot about the holiday on Monday and then, oh, shit, mail, yeah, everyone's slow right now. So, including me. So, um, but you don't need your packet. If those of you that qualified for this event and um, you're still waiting for your packet, I'm glad you're here. I actually would recommend that you watch the video before you put your card together anyway, because I'm going to, this one in particular, I've got um, an alternate idea for you that you might want to do. And so um, you'll, you'll, it'll make sense, I think, as we go along. So in the future, um, I'll be doing this every month. So right now, people that placed a $50 order with me in January are qualifying for the February Crafternoon, which will be on February 20th. My plan is to have it on the 20th every month, um, barring, you know, weirdo holidays or, you know, if it falls on a strange day or something. Um, so next month is actually going to be on a Sunday. So even more relaxing crafternoon time, right? Um, and it will take place at 3 p.m. Central Time going forward. So uh, you can qualify for it by placing a $50 order, or there'll also be a tutorial for purchase. Now, if you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, 
Um, if you're on my team, you're going to get the tutorial for free anyway. That's just one of my team perks. But if you are a demonstrator and you know, you're going to order from yourself because you get that awesome discount and please don't order from me, order from yourself. Um, however, if you uh, would like the tutorial for this class, um, you're welcome to purchase it. The tutorial will be available on Saturday. So those of you that are qualified for the class, you will get that in, e in your email on Saturday. And that will also go up on my blog and be available for purchase. The tutorial consists of the fun fold card that we're doing today. Now, those that qualify got um, one, uh, they're going to make one card today. But I am showing you um, what was supposed to be the one card and four other cards of that same fun fold. So the PDF will have um, all of the cards, the measurements, because uh, some of them you know, differ slightly, and then any specific instructions for the different uh, designs of the same fold. And, um, you know, pictures and photos and all of that. I love project sheets, because it's got all the measurement. I, <laughs> the one here, I've looked at it about 10 times today as I was making my alternate samples. So, um, so the PDF will have the, the fun fold that we're making today, along with all the alternates. And those will be available for $10 US purchase, um, again, on my blog on Saturday. So let's go ahead and get started. Happy crafternoon, everybody. Who's ready to craft? I am, me, me, <laughs> pick me. All right, so I'm gonna flip the camera. I'm gonna be actually demonstrating a, a project first before we get into our fun fold. And the reason, the, um, they're kind of linked in a little bit and you'll see why. So let's go ahead and flip to my desktop camera, which I call Sue Stamfield. Um, so we're down here. Now, those of you that do like project sheets and love ideas, I send out free project sheets every week, two free project sheets. So make sure that you subscribe to my Sue Stamfield project sheets. I also send about, you know, notifications of specials and all the things. So where is that? Mm -hmm right here free project sheets yes suestanfield.com and click on subscribe now i'm going to put that away right now because we want all the room <laughs> so that i can show you things and if i am showing things and it's a little off camera or you can't see it don't hesitate to mention that in my um in the comments here because i can see the comments as i go i'm i'm using my phone as my camera here and i can see the comments on the side and i have my laptop nearby too so Let's get started. Let's get this party started. I'm going to start. I can't remember where I'm starting. All right. I'm starting right here. Okie doke. So we're going to focus uh, for this first couple projects on one bundle. And then we're going to go crazy wild. <laughs> so as I said, originally, um, and in future months, there'll be the one uh, make and take project, which will be a fun fold. And then there'll be four other cards using that same fun fold with different products. Um, I get, I went a little overboard today. So <laughs> there are actually, I don't know how many there are. I think there are five other projects. <clears throat> yeah, I went a little overboard, maybe more. I don't know. I was just having fun and playing and so forth. So the bundle that we are playing with is one of my favorites from the January through June mini catalog. It is called Love and Happiness, and it is a hybrid. Um, what hybrid means is, at least so far, because this happens several times. So we had a hybrid um, product in this past uh, uh July through December? No, July through, yeah, July through. Anyway, the, the last mini catalog, um, we had this one, which is a hybrid folder and a matching dies. This one is along those same lines. So we have um, dies that match a folder and we're gonna play with that. And then we have the stamp set. Now the stamp set, obviously that you can see the hearts and flowers here. This is a heart theme. What I like about this stamp set, it is very versatile as far as it covers anniversaries, it covers weddings, um, it covers Valentine's uh, Day, um, you're engaged, so all sorts of heart-related things. So um, 
Denise really appreciates the project sheet. Oh, you are so welcome. I, I, I put a lot of time and effort into, um, especially the ones that I design myself, like the tulip one. So I'm so good to, so good to hear that. Um, so these, this is the first up product we're playing with. And as I said, this first card, for those of you watching that um, got your packet, you don't need that yet. Um, this first card is actually going to be a little bit similar to our end game or fun fold. Um, and it's one of the alternates that you can use some of your products for. So I have blushing bride cardstock here. It is five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. And I have some pieces of two pieces of basic white that are five and a half by three and a quarter. Oh, thanks, Myrtle. I'm glad you're enjoying the project sheets. And then I have a piece of designer series paper. Now this paper is, um, I cut it three by five and a half. This paper is free. Who likes free? I like free. I like free a lot. So this is part of our celebration, which is going on in January and February for Stampin' Up. If you place a $50 order, you're going to get a, a celebration item of your choice for free. It is a party, Cindy Sue. Woohoo! And this is the Simply Marvelous 6x6 Designer Series Paper, which is a free celebration choice. And it comes in, uh, you've got some, well, let's see, let's read the colors. Balmy Blue, Basic Gray, Blushing Bride, Bumblebee, Coastal Cabana, Flirty Flamingo, Gorgeous Grape, Highland Heather, Misty Moonlight, Pool Party, Smoky Slate, and So Saffron. Now that is a lot of colors, but what what we're doing here is, so we've got Bumblebee and So Saffron. Those are some of our yellows, and those both appear in this pretty marbled paper. Um, in the yellow color. So this is like the Gorgeous Grape and the Highland Heather are both incorporated in this one color. This one is the Pool Party and Coastal Cabana. Um, this one is the Smoky Slate and um, a little bit of basic gray, especially when we flip it over. And then this one is the Balmy Blue. So let's look at the other side of this paper, which looks like that. Um, so we've got our Blushing Bride, our Bumblebee slash So Saffron, our Gorgeous Grape slash Highland Heather, our Pool Party, um, Coastal Cabana, and then the Smoky Slate um, Basic Gray. Very elegant marbled paper, the Balmy Blue, almost a touch of Night of Navy in there. So that's a Simply Marvelous paper. I've used this paper on a lot of the projects today. Um, so I really wanted to show you the different uh, patterns in there because you're going to be seeing them on some of the projects. So for this card, I'm going to start by <laughs> looking at my sample. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and layer this uh, on and then we're going to do some die cutting and embossing with our uh, hybrid bundle. So put this here. So I'm using the seal. Can use any adhesive of your choice, of course. And I'm just lining that up with the sides. And then we have that on there. And then this piece, so this is three and an eighth by five and a half. Um, excuse me, three and a quarter by five and a half. And this is just gonna layer right on top. All right. So there we have our uh, the front of our card. This piece is going to be on the inside. And I'm actually going to stamp on it. So I'm not going to put it in because yet. Because if I muff it up, <laughs> I can flip it over and do it again on the other side, right? So I'm not going not gonna to put that one inside yet. All right. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to bring in the die cutting machine. And I got the big one here shove some things over there we go all right so i am going to do some standard die cutting here i can shift the light a little bit so that you can see i it's really nice because there's all this sun outside um however it was giving all these weird patterns on my desk so 
I had to close the blinds. <laughs> All right, so we're doing our standard setup here, which is platform, the main platform, number one, and then the uh, die cutting adapter, which is number two. And then we're going to put our scarred up cutting plate number three right in there. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Roz. Thanks for tuning in. So we're going to grab our dies for the, um, I, the dies are called Bouquet of Love. It's the Bouquet of Love hybrid with the matching folder. And they're part of the Love and Happiness bundle. I'm going to grab my big heart here. Now for this card, I would also die cut uh, the label, but I've already got that done and already stamped. So um, just taking a little bit of a shortcut there, but normally I would die cut that at the same time. So I have a piece of um, basic white here. Hold on one moment. I wanna make sure I'm doing it the correct direction. Yeah, I think it has to go like that. So I have a piece of basic white. It's not square. It looks like it might be, but it's actually a rectangle. And the dimensions for that are somewhere in my project sheet. Let's take a look. <laughs> three and a half by three and three quarters. And so I've got that heart pretty much centered in there. And I'm going to send that through. Now, the reason that I have this piece so perfectly sized is uh, for this card, I'm only using the heart that I'm cutting out. However, for uh, the card that everybody is making, I'm actually using the frame because you've got, so I got my die cut heart here, but I also got, push this back so you can see, um, this frame that has this cute little stitching around it in an opening. And so I'm going to be using that for our make and take. So I'm going to set that aside. All right. And we're going to go move to embossing. So I'm going to remove the, the die cutting adapter. I'm going to remove all of these plates because I'm going to use a 3D embossing folder. So with 3D embossing folders, you just need the number four plate. And it tells you all that right here on your platform. So no need to memorize it or anything like that, although you will. <laughs> so this is the embossing folder. Now, does that heart look familiar? Um, it lines up perfectly with the heart that I just die cut. So I'm going to open up my folder and I'm going to put my heart in here. And this, I need to line it up. So I actually flip it over <laughs> and uh, just slide it into place. Now you can mostly get it in place on the other side and then but do flip around and check um, because it's it's harder to see from the back. From the front, I can perfectly uh, make sure that it's perfectly lined up. I'm going to bring that up super duper close. You can see there's a little ridge here that I'm just lining up with the edge of the heart. And then I carefully hold it with one finger while I slide the other finger out so that it doesn't shift on me. And then I'm going to lay it in my uh, embossing machine here. Put this top plate on and send it through. Look, the magic clunk. That means good things are happening, right? <laughs> so I'm going to open this up and we have this um, pretty, pretty heart. Isn't that just absolutely stunning and gorgeous? Just a piece of white paper and now it's all so beautiful. All right, so we're gonna pull this aside for now. I'm, I'm gonna need this when we do our make and take project, but for now I'm setting it aside. So let's go back to our card here. And somewhere, there it is. So also in this set of dies, there is a large label and a small label. I'm using the large label and I uh, stamped it with the Valentine greeting message which is right here in the set. And I actually am also going to need this Happy Valentine's Day friend uh, message. So let's grab that. That's for the inside of the card. I really like this one because, uh, you know, not all Valentine cards are for uh, romantic reasons. We send a lot to our friends. So I'd like that Happy Valentine's Day friend is pretty much perfect, right? So I've got my heart there. I'm just going to pop this up on some dimensionals. 
Um, if you don't, uh, you don't like that, you can also um, put it on flat. It's totally up to you. In fact, I might have put it flat on my original card. I can't remember. And then I'm going to layer my Valentine greeting label right over the top. And I'm going to add a couple embellishments. Um, so again, you can pop this up if you want, or you can adhere this flat if you popped up the other one. This folder is absolutely beautiful. Um, it went on to not orderable sta status for a little while, and it is now back as of yesterday. I was <laughs> very relieved to see that. Um, let me pull this out, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if it um, disappears again for a while. So I would recommend if it's on your wish list to get it sooner rather than later. Right now, Stampin' Up! is no longer doing back order items. Um, we are selling what we have in stock, which makes a lot of sense. So um, I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool, and I'm going to use some uh, basic pearls here. And I'm just going to add a couple pearls at each end of the label. Um, it doesn't even matter. I don't know what I did originally. I think I did the small ones here. And that just makes it super elegant. It's already pretty darn elegant. You don't have to add the pearls if you don't want to. That is totally optional. And then I'm actually going to, um, you know me, I like my embellishments, especially if I'm not using ribbon. <laughs> and I'm going to put a large pearl down here and a medium pearl on each side of it. So again, this is not our make and take. This is just an additional uh, project. That now has, ugh, there's a whippet hair on that one, you guys. <laughs> I have three whippets, uh, which are like greyhounds. They don't have long hair. They have very short hair. But that doesn't mean they don't end up everywhere, right? Um, just because they're short, they still tend to travel. So, um, and all three of them are at Joggy Daycare today. Because <laughs> I had a really busy day and uh, it's really cold and uh, they're having a lot of fun there and getting their exercise. So that's, it's a win-win for both of us. So I've got my three pearls down here for just that super elegant touch. Can you see the difference when you just add the, the pearls? Um, again, that's totally optional. And then for the inside of my card, I'm just going to stamp my greeting. Now this is Blushing Bride cardstock. Um, I want Blushing Bride is pretty, pretty light. So for my greetings, I actually used Flirty Flamingo, which is kind of a step darker than the Blushing Bride so that it would show up better. No other reason than that. So happy Valentine's friend in a beautiful font. And we'll put this inside our card. All right, so we have a fun quick and easy pretty quick and easy right valentine that we can send so now let's move on to our let's put this close this up here do i need this again oh i do need it again you know i'm still closing it up because if i can put white cardstock in an ink pad i will <laughs> Hey, Sherry, sounds good. Catch up with us later. All right, so we've got our, our one Valentine. Let's move on to our fun fold today. So the reason I wanted to show that card first is, um, I'll explain in a minute. All right, let's, you know what, I'm, before I do that, I'm going to show you two other cards that are made with this particular bundle. This one was, I think, made by uh, my team. Oh, this was made by Kathy Seal. So this one is uh, that same folder. It's just uh, very vanilla with the very vanilla heart uh, cut out. So she did the whole frame here. And then you can't probably see it at all, but it, it's got sparklies all over it. <laughs> so um, I don't know if she winked, uh, did wink of Stella or spritzed. And then she's got the lovely lace here, um, this lace uh, ribbon right below the label with a little bit of gold uh, pearls on there. And then inside, she's got the small heart and the, um, the wedding sentiment. And then this one is another wedding card. This is one that I did uh, with the silver um, uh, foil paper we have. You get three different patterns of the silver. This is the kind of lavenderish one. And um, this, 
is a wedding card. Obviously, I used basic gray here with a little flower. And then back here, this is actually a ribbon. Grab it off my ribbon holder here. It's the silver mesh ribbon, and you guys, it's so cool. Um, and so I actually did two layers. I, you know, I just laid it behind my window, and and you can't see the seam. Um, the labels covering that up. So, um, so that is just a, a wedding card. And then I used the heart that was cut out from here for the inside of the the card with the congratulations message. So that's a couple other cards with this bundle. And let's move on to our fun fold. Hmm. All right. So just deciding what to do first here. I think I'll go ahead and do the embossing while we have our machine handy. So if you recall on the first card, a little recap here, we die cut that heart out of this uh, piece of cardstock. I am now going to use this piece to make a card so that I can get double duty <laughs> out of one, uh, one uh, die cut there. So I'm going to put my number one in, uh, plate back in. Now, somebody asked me if you can um, emboss the heart and the frame at the same time. So in my experience, if you emboss first and then die cut, you end up flattening some of your pretty, pretty embossing. So I didn't like that. Um, and it's, uh, it would be very easy to ruin your dies um, or your folder and just uh, not emboss if you try to line this up perfectly. I just felt it would be quicker and easier to do them separately. So um, that that's my recommendation on that. So again, I'm putting this inside and I'm closing it up and just checking to see if I'm lined up. I'm teeny bit off. So I'm gonna open it back up and I'm gonna do that same trick where I line it up here. Sorry, the machine is a little bit in my way. I should have maybe lined this up before I pulled in the machine. So I can tell now that that's, that's pretty much perfect. And I'm going to hold my hand in here while I squeeze over here. So I've got a good grip on it. It's not going to slip on me. And now I'm going to turn this around. Hey, Judith, how are you? And then I'm going to put the number four uh, specialty plate on top. And we're going to send this through. All right, now we can, I believe, officially put away our die cutting machine here. And by put it away, I mean throw it on the floor. <laughs> All right, so here we have our pretty embossed piece. And just to recap again on the size on that piece, one moment, let me go to my PDF tutorial here and refer to that size, which is... <laughs> Uh, to die cut the heart and emboss. It's three and a half by three and three quarters. So we've got that die cut and we're ready to put our card together. Now I do want to show you. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you how I scored this, but I'm actually going to show you on the scored piece. And the reason for that is I am 100% out of Blushing Bride cardstock. We've got more in order, but it's not in yet. So if you um, if you placed a $50 order last month, you received this packet from me. I do spend a lot of extra time um, when I am packing these packets to um, try and get the products to you um, as protected as I can. <laughs> so they came in a standard envelope. I put my postcard over the top of them just to protect um, protect the pieces. And then I also put the pieces in a clear envelope to, uh, again, give them additional protection. Now, you might have some little bit bent corners or whatnot that's, I don't think, going to be noticeable at all. We can work with that. So if you, uh, again, if you qualified for the class, this is what came in your packet. So you saw how I did these two pieces. Now you might be wondering why you got the heart too. Well, you got the heart because I had it. And so I did use it on the inside of my card, but you could absolutely just do your inside plane and make a second card with that heart. It's entirely up to you. 
So, but I'll show you how I did it and you can make your choice, right? So let's talk about the scoring for this. We've got all our fun pieces here. We have a note from me that tells you about the, um, everything about the, the event and the, and so forth. And I'm going to bring in my scoring tool. I don't need to score this because it already is, but I'm still going to show you how I scored it because, you know, it's a fun fold card. So this piece of paper is four and a quarter by 11. And this is the folding piece of this card. So it scored at two at three and three quarters at seven and a quarter and at nine. So we're going to fold on those scores. And this is the kind of the mechanism portion of the card, the card that um, is open. This particular fun fold, what I like about it is it's freestanding for display. So you could, they can show off their beautiful card you made them by putting it on a desk or a mantle or somewhere. So, so I've got that all um, folded. And now I have my card base. My card base is four and a quarter by five and a half. And then we have our pretty designer series paper. Now, when you put your card together, you can use either side. It's entirely up to you uh, which side you prefer to use. Um, I'm just going to use this side for, um, for this one, and um, we'll go from there. Now, in my experience, it's a little easier to put these pieces on. You can either put them on before you layer that piece on, or you can layer that piece on and put them on after. It doesn't matter, but you do want to do that before you do some of the other parts on the card. So um, I'm gonna wait for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this on first. I am going to actually use multi-purpose liquid glue. I just made a whole pile of these cards today. And um, I liked what I liked about the multi-purpose liquid glue is that I could shift it a little bit if I didn't get it perfectly lined up on my card base because you kind of have some wiggle room. However, if uh, liquid glue is not your jam, you can use any adhesive and it will be just fine. So I'm going to center this. Now, one of the nice things about putting those papers on the sides, if you're nervous about um, not getting it centered, if you put the papers on first, those can be a guide for you to, to get it in the right place. As I said, I've made a gazillion of these, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I can get it in the right place. Now I got a little liquid glue right here. You can see I already got some dirt on it from my hands. So I happen to have an adhesive racer at hand and I'm just gonna remove that so it doesn't cause any issues. And then I have two little pieces of the designer series paper. These are three and a quarter by four. And we're going to open this up here and we're going to put this right here. So I'm leaving a blushing bride border all the way around it. So that's probably about an inch because I have got about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then we have this other piece right here. And. There we go. So we've got those pattern pieces there. And now we've got a bunch of other pieces here. What is all this about? So um, got this is an extra now. I'm going to put that aside. And this label is the one that came in the packet. And so um, you can stamp any greeting on that. I use the Valentine greetings from the set in Flirty Flamingo. Um, you can use what you have, absolutely. And so we're going to do our next step, which is to attach. Come here, you. Come here. <laughs> We're going to attach this piece of that beautiful, uh, um, simply marvelous paper behind our heart. And you can play with the direction, like if there's a certain way you want it, the swooshes, you know, go for it. Um, so to attach that, I'm actually going to put a glue dot on the front in each corner. Those won't show once I put it behind that heart. So I'm going to stick that here. And another one here. This 
So what are we all doing for self-care today? Susan's crafting, and I also have um, some emergency chocolate at hand. If, you know, if it's needed, it's there. It's back up. <laughs> all right, we're going to pull this out. Well, one of our self-care things is not being outside, at least here in the Midwest, because it is chilly. All right, so you can see the little glue dots right there on the front. And I'm going to flip this over and flip this over and just line it up doesn't really matter because nobody's going to see the back. You can slide it around and get it exactly how you want it, but I just put it in the middle. So I've got my uh, my paper behind, and now there are two other pieces. One of these is cut to perfectly fit inside our fun fold card. The other is cut to be a layer. So um, you're going to want to check and make sure that you've got the, the, you know, you don't stick the wrong pieces together and then have your piece missing for the inside. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to run my tape runner on here, my seal, stick on myself to the cardstock. <laughs> and this is just going to give me a nice frame. It's going to cover up that paper on the back side so that it's all pretty. And then this is now going to attach only to the left panel because I don't want to glue my card closed. My card's going to open like that. So I'm only going to add adhesive on the back on this side. Hey, Cindy. Well, thank you for being a teacher and teaching fourth cares. And I'm glad, fourth graders, and I'm glad that your self-care is watching me craft. That's awesome. So we're going to adhere this right on here. So I've got that stuck on. And look how pretty. Okay, so now we're going to take our Valentine greeting. And we're going to pop that on there. You know how I roll. I'm going with the dimensional. All right. I've lost my first thing of the day. Woohoo. That's kind of a rite of passage, right? Seriously, you guys. Where's I? I had my dimensionals for the last card, and I've now managed to bury them. I have otters. I've got everything else. But I don't have any dimensionals. Oh, just look what I got more in the drawer. You know, as soon as I pull these out, I'll find them, right? Him. I'm going to put a dimensional. I'm just going to put one on the center of the label. And I'm going to pop that right onto my card. And we've got some more pieces in our pack. So let's take a look at those. And I am going to add an embellishment to the end of this label. I just like that look. Um, I can just do that right now. I'm going to add pearls. Um, you could add rhinestones. You could add... Um, gosh, anything. I mean, we have a lot of really pretty, uh, the faceted gems, the clear ones or the white ones would be pretty on this. Um, lots of options. All right. So there we have our label with the, the pearls on it. And then we're ready to do our inside of our card. We've got a few more pieces here. We've got this little heart. Um, we have another piece of the Simply Marvelous paper. This time I'm going to turn it over now this piece is four by, hmm, don't remember, got to look, uh, da, 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 a one and three quarters by four. And again, you could do with the other side up. It's totally up to you. I decided to, you know what, flip it over and show this, this pretty side of the paper. And so there, got that in place. And now I'm ready to put, do my inside piece. And that goes right here. This piece is uh, three and a quarter by four. And then I have this excess heart. Now, again, you could stop right here, stamp your sentiment right there, and have a beautiful uh, Valentine card to send to a friend. Um, and then you could take that heart and do this card. You need another label or something to, you know, you could even just cut half inch uh by three piece of white or however long your greeting is and put that over the heart i'm going to put mine on the inside of the card though and i'm also going to use this other heart that i cut out so those of you that have a packet that's in your packet as well we're going to crack open our flirty flamingo did i just stick my finger in it no i don't think i did well that's a miracle <laughs> and then i'm going to take my happy valentine's day friend and stamp that right here 
So we've got that right inside the heart. And then I'm going to just put a little adhesive on the back of that heart. You could use glue dots too if you prefer. And I'm going to put that right in the middle of this pretty embossed heart. And again, all of these products are the Love and Happiness Bundle. On the back of this heart, I'm not going to use a tape runner because it will likely tear this, this embossing embossed paper because it's a little more delicate now that it's been embossed. So I'm going to just pop some glue dots on there to attach it to my card. And then I will show you what's so cool about this particular freestanding fun fold card. You can put it, if you have a lot to say, you can put it higher up. I don't, so I like to just sign it and be done. So I put it right in the middle, it's your choice. But then the, the recipient can stand it up on a desk or a mantle to display. It folds flat to go in a regular standard um, envelope. Grab one here. Now with the pearls and, and other pieces, um, it, it is gonna be a little lumpy. I personally recommend the non-machinable stamps. Um, they are a little more expensive, they're 88 cents, um, but then it doesn't go through the machine and it covers you if your, your card is lumpy or thick. And they're right now they're pretty butterflies, so they're, they look nice too. And then I also recommend that you put something protective over the card if you want it to, like I spend so much time on my cards, like it kills me to think they might get damaged in the mail. So um, I put a postcard over them. You can also emboss uh, just a piece of cardstock and put that over. It's kind of a pretty extra bonus that they get in their card. So that is the super cool fun fold. And as you can see how that just stands up and um, just opens like that. So I made a bunch more of these. Let's see what it looks like here in the envelope, all ready to send, right? So I was playing with this design and just using some of our other products. So let me share with you. Again, those of you that um, qualified for the class, not only did you get your packet, you're going to be getting the PDF that has uh, the instructions for these other cards. <laughs> they got a big old pile here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, we're going to start a little bit simpler, maybe simpler, <laughs> with this pretty card. So this is the same, um, the same fold. And on um, this one, I used the Flowering Fields Designer Series paper, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And I use the elegant faceted gems there. Um, this one also uses the Simply Marvelous paper because it, one of the colors it comes in is Pool Party slash Coastal Cabana, which perfectly matched this particular pattern in that pretty tulips paper. So seriously, you would go to a store, how much money would you spend for this card? Um, and it was this one, I just... I just let the pretty designer paper be the, the front of the card. I didn't do any die cutting on this card. Um, and you can, if you want, you can add, I, I even added the marble paper back here to be extra fancy. And then inside the card, I added some panels of that pretty tulip paper to bring the tulips inside the card. Um, this sentiment is from the um, Special Moment stamp set. That's a free with a $100 purchase. This sentiment is from an adorable Easter set uh, that is called Easter Friends that I'm going to be showing you another card within a minute. But I liked the sentiment, may your days blossom with joy and happiness because of the flowers. I just thought that went uh, well. So this is um, one of our alternate projects here for our fun fold today. And oh, what should we do next? Let's see. And um, while we're talking about the tulip paper, this is the card that I sent with um, my catalogs. For those of you that quote, got uh, catalogs from me, it was one of one of the designs of tulip paper. Um, I just, I love this paper. So pretty. And this card, you can show both sides. All right. I'm getting off on my side tangents here. Let's put you guys aside. We'll show you later. Let's look at more fun fold cards. So I mentioned the Easter Friends stamp set. So I did this um, fun fold card with the um, Easter Friends stamp set and this adorable bunny. So fun to color, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Um, and I'll have all of the information about how I colored it with the colors and so forth in the PDF. Um, 
and uh, I kept it pretty simple here. I actually didn't put any designer paper back here. You certainly could, or I was thinking um, you could emboss um, dots. I, I left this one pretty simple, and then it opens up like that. It says, Happy Easter, and then sending warm and happy wishes this spring, which is a sentiment from the um, Easter Friends set. It also has an adorable little chicky and this very happy duck. <laughs> in the set. So, and of course, there's our Mayor Days Blossom with Joy and Happiness that we used on the tulip card. So, um, I just want to warn you on this one. Um, this is a set that I, I've been a demonstrator for a long time, and sometimes I have no idea what's going to sell out and what's going to run out of stock. This one is so, so very cute that it would not surprise me in the least if this one became very hard to order anywhere close to Easter. So if this one is on your wish list, I would highly recommend you not wait on that um, because I can, you know, foresee that happening. So, um, so that is our cute one, a little Easter one. And then this one, Sue, did you simply stamp the sentiment on the tulip card or was it embossed? Um, Mary, is it this one that you're questioning? And that, yes, I simply stamped it in Pool Party. So um, just straight up stamping. So with Pool Party, that's a lighter color. So um, make sure your pad is nice and juicy. Or you could actually go one step darker with the Coastal Cabana if you were afraid it would be too light. Um, so there is our, our pretty simple Easter card. This is with Petal Pink. And this one would make a really cute baby card or even for a, a toddler um a little girl would you know of any age i think would would love this card so i love this card and i'm a girl of any age so there we go <laughs> all right so that one uh, featured again um that one didn't feature any free celebration options so let's look at some more free celebration options um these are the adorable awesome otters um that i did for this uh this this card same fold looking familiar and then inside it says, I have something for you. You're holding it. And we have another otter who is holding a, uh, a fishy. So I thought that worked with the, um, uh, you're holding it. Um, so the I have something for you, you're holding it, is from that other celebration set, the special moment stamp set, which is all greetings. Um, and the awesome otters are another celebration stamp set. So you place a $50 order, you can get the otters. Place a $100 order, you can get this huge special moment stamp set. Um, and then I used the splatter embossing folder on that. And then I even have, you see the little, uh, the little splashes of water. Those are actually an embellishment. I don't remember what they're called, but they'll be on the project sheet on the PDF. Um, and uh, they just, it brings it to life by popping that out. And I use the postage stamp um, punch on that. So that is our adorable little otter card. All right, so what did I say? With this class, we were going to have the sample, and we were going to have uh, four alternates. All right, we've got three alternates. Let's keep going. All right, so uh, let's show this one. <clears throat> so this one, I did the same exact card except for I changed the, from, from our make and take here, which was this one. Instead of Valentine's, I used the Simply Marvelous paper, the, uh, the gray one, and made it an elegant wedding card. But with the heart, instead of putting it on the inside, oh, look at the whippet hairs. Oh my gosh, you guys. They're not even here and they're leaving little, <laughs> little messages for me. This one, I actually had the heart hanging over the panel that pulls out. Um, so that uh, when they open it, it's it they can see the heart there. And then when they stand it up, you know, more importantly, when they stand it up for display, I have to tilt it down here so you can see, you can see the the you know the hearts there. So um, so there is a pretty quick and easy um, wedding card. A ribbon on there, a little gotta have the rhinestones for the ring. So that's our four alternates, but as I mentioned, <clears throat> I couldn't stop today. So it's the, the first Crafternoon class and I went a little bonkers. So I've actually got two more. Oops. So <laughs> there's, um, yeah, a lot today. All right. So this one is for St. Patrick's Day, which is going to be here before we know it. Um, so you might recognize this. So this little heart here from the uh, Love and Happiness Bundle is what I used um, for the 
make four leaf clover here and I'll, I'll explain in the project sheet how I did the stem, which is also came from the heart. You can probably figure that out though. And this paper is another free <laughs> celebration choice. And where is it? Mm, it's right here. It is called Sunshine and Rainbows. So that's where this uh, uh, granny apple green paper comes from. And I've got my polka dot folder. The uh, St. Patrick's Day greeting is actually from Oh, A Wish for Everything is the name of the stamp set. And then this one, it opens up like this. And inside we've got the rainbow and May the Luck of the Irish Go Double for You, which is also from that stamp set. And then we have a little bit of the, I, I love that there's two different <laughs> kind of just uh, stripey papers in here. And I love both of them. Um, the rainbow is in here as well. I just literally cut it with my trimmer, no die cutting or anything on this one other than what's on the front um, to do my rainbow. So that's a little St. Patrick's Day card. All right, I couldn't stop. <laughs> I got one more. Uh, I would have kept going had I not run out of time and had to come join you. So um, the last one that you might know, I've been a little obsessed with tulips lately. So this is the last alternate card. And it, of course, is with our beautiful tulip dies that form these really, really cool 3D tulips. Um, I have a full, if you're a Project Sheet subscriber, you got a very full and complete detailed um, tutorial on how to build all the different tulips. Even for this one, I have two options, <laughs> all the different tulips in the stamp set. Um, so, uh, but for this class, um, you will also get the directions for this one. So I have the tulip on the front and then I liked it so much I had to put a tulip on the inside. And then I put a little bit more of the tulip paper in here so that we are just tulip crazy. Who else is tulip crazy? I love spring with the tulips. And we're not there yet, but we can start dreaming about it, right? <laughs> so um, this is just, just thinking of you today. Who wouldn't love to get this in the mail, right? And then it's uh, no one deserves a happier birthday than you. So all of these cards are from... Um, uh, you missed, oh, how can you become a subscriber? Well, that's, uh, that's very easy. Super easy. All right. So for my free weekly project sheets, um, subscribe at suestanfield.com, click on subscribe and sign up for my newsletter. And in this next newsletter, I will send out the tutorial for the tulips one more time. Um, and so you won't miss out. So don't worry about that. For those of you that want the details on how to make all of the cards <laughs> for today and you didn't qualify for the class, um, you can purchase the uh, PDF tutorial that will show you how to make, um, have all the dimensions, all the supplies. Um, I'll have step-by-step -step directions as needed. Um, like I said, I went a little overboard, um, and, <laughs> and of course our, uh, original project. So to qualify for the next Crafternoon Creative Escape, I would love to have you escape with me, place a $50 order in my online store and you will automatically qualify. You don't need a host code. You don't need anything. Um, I will know that you placed the order. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we got a loose embellishment, guys. Dang. Um, that came from this card right here. Okay. All right. We've got it sorted. Nobody panic. We had a runaway embellishment, but we've, it's been collected. When you put these on, you really need to push down hard, um, just to make sure you're setting that glue dot. And I, <laughs> I kept changing my mind where I wanted them. I changed them like four times. So I never did that. So let me do that right now. If you want to purchase the tutorial, it will be on my blog on Saturday. It will be $10.00. Um, with the information for all of these <laughs> cards. And the next Crafternoon will take place on February 20th. Uh, if you place a $50 order in January, you will qualify for that um, class and you'll get a packet in the mail and it will be a different fun fold and different alternates. Um, we might use some of the same sets. We might use different ones. We'll just wait and see. So I'm going to flip the camera over here. Where's the camera? There's the camera. <laughs> uh, I think the only thing I didn't show was um, 
No, I think we're good there. Okay, we'll stop there. It's uh, almost, I wanted to keep this to one hour. So we're pretty, pretty much right on for that. Um, I will be back live on uh, Saturday evening this week at 730 Central Time if you want to tune in for more crafty fun. And uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for letting me share this. Those of you that got your packets, um, keep an eye out for that email with your PDF. Team members, keep an eye out for the email with the PDF. And if you have any questions as you put your card together, of course, let me know. And I think that's it for today. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Stay warm, be well, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.